Let's get into fun stuff, right? Let's talk about some monk. All right, new talents. Let's, I, I'm looking at these in a vacuum, and then we'll see how they function in the tree. Crashing momentum. Targets you rolled through are snared by are snared by 40% for five seconds. Could be good in Mythic Plus. Depends entirely upon dungeon design. Winds reach. The range of disable is increased by five yards. Uh, I think it's more for PvP because uh, we don't really use disable a ton right now in, in PvE. There's like some very niche uses, but not a lot. But getting an extra five yards of range is going to be big for PvP. The duration of crashing momentum is increased by three per sec three seconds, and it's now snare now reduces the movement speed by an additional twenty percent. I'm assuming crashing momentum is something else in this tree. We'll find out. Bounding agility roll and cheat torpedo travel a small distance further. Again, this could be really good or really bad. I have definitely cheat torpedoed off platforms more than I care to count, and giving me extra range on my roll to be able to do the exact same thing. Potentially not great. Depends in largely on where it's at in the tree. If it's in a good place in the tree, it might be worth taking. But if it's like where like the improved roll charge is at right now, probably very skippable. Jade walk while out of combat, your movement speed is increased by fifteen percent. Okay, I guess. Huh? Sure. Paralysis now removes all enrage effects from its targets. That's cool. Uh, Windwalker or Monk just got soothed, y'all. It got Soothe on its CC. That means you can dispel Raging. <laughs> Even if, I, Now, the question is, does it have to paralyze the mob in order to get the Soothe off? If the answer to that is yes, this is bad. But if it, like, just using Paralysis gives you a, is a Soothe, like, dude, you can dispel in Raging. Dispel Raging affix. You can deal with, like, uh, like the mobs in a tall desire that rage. Like that. Oh, man, like... Dude, that's that's giga. I like it. Uh, Ancient Art reduces the cooldown of Paralysis by 15 seconds, which is kind of what the improved Paralysis talent right here is anyways. Uh, and the and the cooldown of Leg Sweep by 5 or 10 seconds. So you get Tiger Tail Sweep built into this too. too. I like that. That's good. I like that change. Condensing some points. I like it. Alright. Energy Transfer. Successfully interrupting an enemy reduces the cooldown of Paralysis and roll by 5 seconds. Okay, so this actually is either going to be incredibly good, depending on dungeon design, or it might not be that good. You pr Depending on the tree's setup, you probably take it. But I like that it's not an auto-pick every time. Like, I mean, getting roll cooldown is pretty good. Like, dude, we're going to be rolling all over the place. It's going to be awesome. Very curious. Quick footed, the duration of snare effects on you is reduced by 20%. That's actually potentially even in PvE, very good depending on mechanic design. Awesome. Spirit's Essence, Transcendence Transfer Snares targets within 10 yards by 70% for 4 seconds when cast. Uh, I think that's a PvP thing. I don't really see use for that unless you are just like. Like as a brewmaster, like you could potentially go set up like a transcendence, like, hey, I'm gonna snare and run out because we need to. Interesting. I don't mm, I don't know how useful that's gonna be for PvE. PvP is probably giga. We'll see. Peach and prosperity. Peach and prosperity? Is that correct? Reduces the cooldown of Bring of Peace by five seconds. Bruh, what's Bring of Peace's cooldown right now? 45 seconds. So getting Ring of Peace on a 40 second cooldown, probably not giga, but good. And uh, I don't know the last time we used Song of Chi-Gi, so I don't care about that. Swift Art. Roll removes a snare effect once every 30 seconds. Dude, that's that could also be really nice if you're in an area that has a lot of PV or a lot of PVE snares. Last boss of Azure Vault, for example, uh, when it was in season one, like had that snare. Being able to remove that, uh, removing entangling every once every 30 seconds is good, even though typically you can just tiger's lust it. But if you can remove it off yourself with roll, that allows you to tiger's lust someone else. So that's potentially very good. Kind of like that actually. Celestial Determination. While your Celestial is active, you cannot slow be slowed be below 90% normal movement speed. I like it. I like that a lot. Again, 
this in PvP is going to be giga. In PvE, it's entirely dependent on what type of slows there are out there. Chi proficiency. Magical damage done increased by 24% and healing done increased by 24%. Um, so immediately thinking, uh, obviously, the healing done will be good for Mistweaver. Magical damage, and honestly, good for uh, Brewmaster as well, because it infects things like Gift of the Ox and Expel Harm. The magical damage done is for Mistweaver. I, outside of maybe Jade Fire Stomp, I don't know what kind of magical damage. I'm not thinking of any. I mean, Chi Burst or Chi Wave. Magical damage for Brewmaster, very good, because you do a lot of fire damage in the kit. Magical damage for Windwalker, there's some lightning damage through Zhuen. So potentially decent there. Probably a talent that you'll just grab along the way. Um, but the healing done on yourself is going to be big because that affects, I'm assuming, Expel Harm, Self Vivifies, um, things like that. Healing Winds, Transcendence Transfer, immediately heals you for 15% of your maximum health. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, interesting. So I'm making Transcendence. Wait, the same removes Tiger Less confirmed to still remove it? As far as I know, yes. Obviously, I'm just looking at the talents in a vacuum. So I don't know exactly if uh, if Tiger's also even still around. We'll see. But like, if you have multiple, like, with Quick Footed for example, or was it uh, with Swift Art for example? If you like think of Entangling Week, if you know like, hey, I'm on my thirty second, my next roll is going to remove a snare. You can remove that and then target someone else with a Tiger's Lust and help them remove it. So you could target like a healer or a caster so that they don't lose DPS or healing up time. Trying to move, like. Potentially really, really good group utility. Cheap proficiency, I think, will be like a must take on Brewmaster. Like, this is just screams Brewmaster to me because you have a lot of fire damage, a lot of healing needs with Get the Celestials and uh, your orbs. Um, potentially good for Mistweaver, depending on magical damage. Like, like I said, I think it's only Chi Wave and Jade Fire Stomp. And I don't know outside of Zhuen, I'm not thinking of anything specific that Windwalker does. I mean, obviously, Jade Fire, if you talent it. We'll see. Transcendence Transfer giving you 15% HP healing is really interesting and potentially, like, makes... If you can use this effectively, you are, like... It probably takes a little bit of Giga Braining and some and smart setup and understanding of damage patterns, but being able to Transcendence out and getting a 15% HP buff on yourself is probably, like, really, really good. Like, really good. That's a lot of HP. It's a lot of HP. All right. Martial Instincts increases your physical damage done by 2% and avoidance increased by 2%. I think uh, you probably are going to, if it's in a good place, you take that all the time. Lighter than air. Roll causes you to become lighter than air, allowing you to double jump to dash four. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> We're gonna get fucking. Uh, I play Overwatch, so to me, I'm thinking immediately like uh, Hanzo Dash or Lightweaver Dash, where you can double jump and you dash forward a short distance. Like, you can roll and then double jump, and like, obviously, we'll have to see how far this dash is. But like, if you could roll and then dash forward with the double jump, like, bro, that could be. There could be some hysterical clips that come out of this. This. <laughs> oh man, I'm oh, I'm excited by that actually. You get a good escape tool if you need it. You get a good uh catch up to your tank because your Vengeance Demon Hunter double infernal striked all the way out into the ether. You get hey, I gotta run away from this mechanic, I can close the gap faster. Um there are a lot of mechanics, for example, where transcendence cooldown won't be up. Uh so think of like um what's the uh, I'll just use an example from Neltharis Magma Tusk. So say like you're you're charging, you're sending your charge back and forth across the room. You can only transcend it's the first, but now you can all of a sudden roll and double jump to dash to close the gap quickly on the second charge while your transcendence is still on cooldown. And then transcendence again, like on the third one, like that makes your ability to maintain uptime potentially really good. Uh, I really like this talent. I really, really like this talent. And then Flow of Chi, you gain a bonus effect based on your current health. If you're over 90%, you gain a movement speed bonus, which stacks with things like wind walking. That could be very interesting. If you're mid-level health between 30, 90 and 35, you just get a DR by 5%. Hell yeah. 
and below 35%, you get increased healing. That one's kind of meh. But, like, these two, I really, really like that. Really, really like that. Like, dude, this is really, really good. Man, do I like this a lot. Transcendence Linked Spirits. Transcendence now tethers your spirit to an ally for an hour, and you can teleport to your... So you get Swap Blaster? Like, I know Valen kind of told me about this, my, my guildmate. Like, he told me you could teleport to your ally's location. Like, dude, this has troll potential out the ass, man. This has troll potential out the ass. I kind of want to fuck with my brother on this. My brother who plays Priest and has life gripped me into lava more than I care to count. I can now just uh, transcendence with him off the fucking platform. So probably going to be useful for like trolling while we're getting prepped for bosses, but I don't know if this is going to be great during boss fights or anything like that. But some real potential for some just shit shithousery going down in the open world, and I kind of love it. Rushing reflexes. Your heightened reflexes allow you to react swiftly to the presence of enemies, causing you to quickly lunge to the nearest enemy in front of you within 10 yards after you roll. Wait. So between lighter than air, rushing reflexes, transcendence, roll going further. Who's going to escape you? How is anyone going to get away from a Windwalker now? Dude, like this is going to be kind of fucked in PvP. Clash is now in the Clash tree. Um, I hate Clash, so I probably won't talent it. And then Chi Wave has been reworked. Okay, interesting. So right now, for anyone that doesn't play Monk, uh, Chi Wave is an ability that you can take in the Clash tree where basically it's an active ability. Um, you send out a Chi Wave. You just basically use it on cooldown every 15 seconds. And it bounces off you or any target nearby. Um, it does a little bit of damage, a little bit of healing. It's kind of RNG. It's not a great ability. Um, I use it mainly as a pool tool on Monk, on my Brewmaster. Don't really use it beyond that. But the... And Chi Wave for, like, Mystery Vern Windwalker is pretty fucked. Like, you don't really use it at all. Um, so, we'll see. I'm going to go back and just replay this so I have some noise in my ears. All right. So every 15 seconds, your next Rising Sun Kicker Vivify releases a wave of Chi energy that flows through friends and foes, dealing nature damage or healing, bounces. Okay, so it just makes it so that whenever you Rising Sun Kick every 15 seconds, you're going to do shit. The Rising Sun Kick for Windwalker and Brewmaster is on like a 12 second cooldown. So like every other Rising Sun Kick probably, well, for Windwalker, it's not going to be every other Rising Sun Kick because you can get resets on Blackout Kick. Same with Mistweaver. For Brewmaster, you don't have anything that resets your timer, so it's basically every other Rising Sun Kick. And even then, Rising Sun Kick is not a high priority for Brewmaster, so you could potentially get a Chi Wave on every Rising Sun Kick as Brewmaster. Not going to be the case on Windwalker or Mistweaver because of the reset mechanics, but uh, I like that Chi Wave is now a passive ability. It makes it a little more friendly. And hey, a, a button gone for Brewmaster. I'm down with that. Talent Removals. The Monk class tree has almost been completely reworked. We'll cover big removals and changes, but look at the images for specific positions. Dampen Harm has been moved to Brewmaster Baseline, so no more for Windwalker or Mistweaver. Little sad. White Tiger statue is now only Windwalker. Okay, that's fine. I wasn't using it on either of my other specs, so I don't care. And Summon Blackhawk statue is now Baseline for Brewmaster, but I thought I saw it in the tree. Uh, what? Okay, never mind. Okay. Um, so we lost a button in Chi Wave, because we always stand on the Chi Wave, but now we're getting Black Ox Statue, so I haven't lost, I haven't freed up a Keybind yet. That's a problem. Class and Talent Tuning, Elusive Mists, which is a, uh, Class Tree Talent, which wasn't, I mean, nobody really used it. Um, but they did buff it to make it 6% reduced damage to you and your target was 3 I think this was, I don't even think I use this in a clouded focus build, so it's kind of whatever. I don't care. Um, but Vivify getting a healing buff and a mana cost reduction. Big fan of that. Bounce back, which is down here, this part of the tree. 
um, propped off of uh, going below a certain threshold. It's now even lower to 12% versus 20, um, but reduces damage by 20% for one talent point versus it being two. So that's a talent point freed up. Great. She burst damage got a big damage buff and a big healing buff. Cool. Um, again, Windwalker and Mystery reuse that quite a bit. So um, good for them. It's a damage buff. Expeditious Fortification. Cooldown reduction reduced 30 seconds instead of 2 minutes for Windwalker and Mistreaver. Great, now you just don't pick it. Like, you just skip the talent entirely. Like, you just take Fort Brew. You don't. You maybe don't even take Fort Brew. Like, you just skip this part of the tree. As Windwalker and Mistreaver now. Like, Fort Brew sucks as a cooldown. Now, with Dampen Harm being gone, you might be forced to take it. Just to give you something. But, like... Eh, interesting. Uh, kind of mixed on that one. Fast Feet is now a one talent point. Good. Uh, Fatal Touch now requires one talent point. Good. And increases damage by 5% after for 30 seconds after being cast. So that encourages you actually to uh, touch of death early in a boss kill window because you get the extra damage for that 30. Like you're going to want to touch of death right at the beginning of the execute window on a boss. So that you get that extra 5% damage for the next 30 seconds. And typically in that 30 second window, you should kill a boss. So it's 5% more damage below 15%. Probably good for raid. For Mythic Plus, this is probably Garbo. Grace of the Crane, which is basically increased all your healing. It's now from 8% uh, for 2 points. It's now 1% for 6% for 1 talent point. Fine. Iron Shell Brew increases your maximum health and damage reduction by 10%. Okay, now that makes Iron Iron Shell Brew probably worth for for Monk, but I mean it's still like a seven minute cooldown or some dumb shit like that for Windwalker and Mistriever. Fine. Resident Fist now being one talent point and save them all being one talent point. Great. And Tiger Tail Sweep got adjusted to only increase the range by four yards for one talent point. You're still probably not taking it, so that's fine. All right. So that's the class tree. Now let's look at Mistriever. Again, we're looking at these in a vacuum, and then we'll go play with the talent trees in, in Wowhead. Crane style. Rising Sun Kick now kicks up a gust of mist to heal two allies within 40 seconds. Wait. Kicks up your mastery? And then Blackout Kick and Spinning Crane Kick can do it within one ally within 40 yards. So that actually might make mastery a little bit better now. Which is smart, because Mistreavers don't really care about their mastery right now. But if your damage abilities now proc a mastery, all of a sudden your mastery might be better. Interesting. Zen Pulse is now, uh, instead of an active ability, is now passive. Renewing Mist Seal over time has a chance to cause your next Vivify to also trigger a Zen Pulse on its target and then and on all allies with Renewing Mist, healing them for six, healing them increased by 6% per Renewing Mist active up to 30%. So Zen Pulse right now basically just does damage and ally gets healed for a little bit. Now this is basically just going to make it so that your Vivify Cleave can basically proc a Zen Pulse heal. Now, you know, this actually could be really interesting because if you have, like, a melee stat group, if it does the Zen Pulse and does the healing and the damage, like, that triggers off of itself quite a bit. That could be decent damage off of a Zen Pulse. Like, actually might be really good damage off of Zen Pulse. Interesting. We'll have to play with it. Chi Harmony. Renewing Mist applies Chi Harmony to its initial target, increasing the healing taken from you by 50% for 8 seconds. And this replaces the life... Uh, Energizer Brew Life Cycles Choice Note. Good. I hated both of these, so good riddance. And Chi Harmony actually is like, I think that's our Season 3 tier set right now. So they're integrating the tier set into the tree. Great. Um, Essence Font and Font of Life removed. Great. Thunder Focus T was moved to Essence Font, so it's moved way up the tree to make it easier to access. Good. Or it was moved up one row, rather. Mana T was moved over to where Thunder Focus T is at. Good. Healing Elixir is now in the Manatee location. Healing Elixir is taken in a lot of builds, so that's fine. Um, oh, it took the location of it, and then this life cycle node got moved up. Okay. Echoing Reverberation removed. Fine. Clouded Focus removed. Hell yeah, baby. Get out of here. I fucking hate you, Clouded Focus. And Peer into Peace, which is a new talent that was introduced in the last patch. And Ancient Teachings, which is... Uh, your damage to healing conversion uh, location swaps and connection no longer exist. I'll be curious to see how that looks. Mastery Gust of Mist now includes Rise of the Sun Kick and Jade Fire Stop. That's cool. But 
That's actually very cool. Invigorating Mist, healing buff by 40%. Nice. Jade Bond, Chi-Gi's healing is increased by 40%, and Yulon's Soothing Breath increased by 300%. So they reworked the talent just to make... Like, so Jade Bond, I think, was Talent Choice Node. I think it was, yeah, Talent Choice Node here with Gift of Celestials. So you either got more Celestials. Now this is just going to make your Celestials, when they're out, more powerful. I think more Celestials is still going to be better, but this is a positive change. Resplendent Mist. Gust of Mist has a 30% chance to do more healing, so they kind of tweak the numbers on it with the change to Gust of Mist's including your ability damage, so they probably need to just balance it out. I think that's fine. Um, overall, most of the positive changes. I think all of these are good. I still kind of hate that Energizing Brew Life Cycles is around. Um, Essence Font being gone, Cloud of Focus being gone, uh, Font of Life being gone. I'm fucking happy about all of that. I love all of those are gone, so honestly, I'm going to call it a win. I think it's a win for Mistweaver. Windwalker. I've heard a lot of people very excited about this. So let's see. Momentum boost. Fist of Fury damage is increased by 100% of your haste, and Fist of Fury does 10% more damage each time it deals damage, resetting when Fist of Fury ends. That's fine. Your auto attack speed is increased by 60% for 8 seconds after Fist of Fury ends, which replaces Touch of Karma. So we're losing Karma. It says it replaces Touch of Karma. So is Karma going baseline, or are we losing it? Because if we're losing it, that's bad. Karma's actually good. I actually like Karma. But this does give Win uh, Windwalker some haste scaling, potentially. Because the more haste you have, the more Fist of Fury damage you have. So, like, you're still not going to go chase haste. But it doesn't feel bad to have it now. All of a sudden, those haste verse pieces that I saw earlier on stream are uh, quite good. Or quite... They're better, at least. Alright, Acclamation. So Power Strikes, which basically made it so that you'd always get the extra Chi. Rising Sun Kick increases the damage your target receives from you by 4% for 12 seconds. Multiple instances may overlap. Um, cool. Probably doesn't change much. I kind of hate that Power Strikes is going potentially going away because like you need the Chi generation, but if they're trying to steady out your Chi generation, then... I mean, even really, Power Strikes didn't make it unpredictable. You knew when you were getting that third Chi. Hmm. Okay. Rise of the Sun Kick increasing your target, the damage your target receives by 4%. Um, if they overlap, does that mean like durations overlap and does it stack? So like if you have two of them, do you get 8% damage? Or does it last for like 24 seconds? Like what do you mean by overlap? I'll be curious to see how that works. Dual threat. Your auto attacks have a 20% chance to instead kick your target dealing physical damage and increasing their damage dealt by 5% for 5 seconds. This replaces open palm strikes. Open palm strikes being gone makes sense because momentum boost is being put in. Um, but again, auto attack, which means auto attack doing more damage, which means that dual wield builds become much more viable. Haste becomes much more viable. Like, they're trying to do something to make Windwalker scale with haste a little bit better. I don't know how effective these are going to be without playing them. But on the surface, it, it seems like a decent idea, but I want to see how it goes in practice. Brawler's Intensity. The cooldown of Rising Sun Kick is reduced by 1 second, and the damage of Blackout Kick is increased by 10%. You're probably just going to take that all the time. Ordered Elements. During Storm, Earth, and Fire, Rising Sun Kick reduces Chi cost by 1 for 5 seconds, and Blackout Kick reduces the cooldown of affected abilities by additional 1 second. And then uh, activating the ability resets the remaining cooldown of Rising Sun Kick and grants 2 Chi. Holy shit, that does a lot. And it replaces Spiritual Focus! Fuck off, Spiritual Focus. Hate you. Um, this is awesome. So this makes it so that using Storm, Earth, and Fire on cooldown, or on, oh, gives you the two chi. You get immediately Rising Sun Kick to get the chi cost reduction, and that'll allow you to free Blackout Kick almost immediately, which means you can then get the addition. Like, there's some really nice gameplay loop inside of Storm, Earth, and Fire that I, I'm a big, SEF has its issues, but I'm a big SEF fan. Uh, at least I've become a big SEF fan. I hated it in BFA and Shadowlands, but over the course of Dragonflight, like, I've kind of come to like it. So the fact that now it has this really interesting gameplay loop attached to it, beyond just pop them, you get a threat reduction, and all you do more damage across the board, like, now you're getting some really cool stuff. And does the Rising Sun Kick chi costs stack with your... You know, when your... Uh, your guys... 
replicate your abilities? Does a blackout kick cooldown reduction replicate the abilities? If that's the case, it could be very, very cool. Courageous Impulse, the blackout kick passive effect, with basically uh, your abilities have a chance to make your next blackout kick completely free and deal a little bit more damage. Um, now it does 175% and gets rid of and replaces. It takes the location of Dance of GG. Okay, so that sounds like Dance of GG is still around, just moved uh, moved to a different spot. Um, Courageous Impulse, that's going to be very good. Blackout Kick um, is a big part of your damage kit, especially right now with the current tier set. And the, depending on how they design these tier sets, this could continue to be the case. Um, but, I mean, getting a massive Blackout Kick on your free one like this basically just takes the tier set and bakes it into your talent tree which i think is a good idea blackout kick increases the damage of your tiger pumps by 10 percent, stacking up to 12 times i whatever i don't think that's going to be all that great um because you don't like if serenity is around still then this potentially has some play because you don't tiger palm at all during your serenity window and you absolutely spend blackout kick quite a lot in Serenity Windows, so that has a potential to be a thing, but I don't see it seeing a lot of play, especially with SEF being what looks to be like a very, very good cooldown. Energy Burst. When you consume the Blackout Kick passive, you have a 100% chance to generate a Chi. Awesome. And it replaces Forbidden Technique, which makes it so that you can use it twice within 5 seconds. Great. I see that they're cutting back on Touch of Death talents. I'm a fan. Fuck Touch of Death builds. Rushing Jade Wind is a passive now. All right, Strike of the Wind Lord applies Mark of the Crane to all the enemy struck. Great. And summons a Whirling Tornado around you, causing physical damage over six seconds to all enemies with the, within eight yards. So basically, when you Strike of the Wind Lord, you get an RJW. That is cool. That is great damage in AOE. It is probably pretty decent damage in single target. And now makes Rushing Jade Wind a very, very viable pick in the tree. I love this. And Rushing Jade Wind, like... Outside of Brewmaster, like you don't use it on the other specs, but Rushing Jade Wind is a cool animation, so I'm a fan. Sequence Strikes, you have a 100% chance to gain Blackout Kick passive after consuming a Dance of Chi-G. So you get a free Spinning Crane Kick into a free Tiger's Love, or free Blackout Kick that does 175% more damage. Some very interesting AoE implications there. Gale Force, new talent. Targets sh struck by Strike of the Windlord are sent reeling from its impact. Cause them to become vulnerable to your attacks for 10 seconds. Your abilities have a 100% chance to affect the target a second time at 10% effectiveness is nature damage while they are vulnerable. That is fucking cool. I like that. Now make Strike of the Windlord the most important thing to use in your kit. Because then you're getting Giga Rising Sun Kick, Giga Blackout Kicks, Giga Spinning Crank Kicks doing even more damage. Like, awesome. I, I love this. Hopefully it replaces the... Uh, this talent, yeah, it's right where I thought it was going to be. It places this talent here. Love, 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 Gale. I like this. You take uh, Improved Strike of the Windlord in all your talent builds now, so this basically just makes it so you grab Gale Force in all your builds. Great. Um, Communion with the Wind gives you reduced cooldown of Strike of the Windlords and deals increased damage. I think you're going to take this because Strike of the Windlords feels like it's going to be a very, very powerful ability. And I just get the hunch that they're going to build a tier set around it. Revolving Whirl. Whirling Dragon Punch has a 100% chance to activate Dance of Chi G. Are they going to make Whirling Dragon Punch a thing again? Because if you can Rise of the Sun Kick, Fist of Fury at Giga Damage because of Momentum Boost, you get extra damage on that because of your Haste proc. You can then Whirling Dragon Punch, guarantee a Dance of Chi G proc. Get the big damage off of that, which also guarantees your Blackout Kick proc, which does 175% more damage, with Shadow Boxing Tregs doing multiple... Oh my god! Dude. <laughs> that is amazing. Like, this could be good in single target and AoE. That's the wild fucking thing about it. Alright. Knowledge of the Broken Temple, Whirling Dragon Punch grants four stacks of Teachings of the Monastery, and its damage increased by 20%. Teachings of the Monastery can now stack up to eight times. So Teachings of the Monastery is a passive given to Windwalkers in Dragonflight that basically made it so when you Tiger Palmed, you stacked up a, a passive on your Blackout Kick that made it hit additional times. It capped at three. Now you're going to be able to stack it up to eight times, so you're going to get eight hits of Blackout Kick 
just for whirling or get four hits just for whirling dragon punching but potentially up to eight hits like the single target damage potentially is bananas because then you consider again revolving whirl you get the dance of 2g proc which i mean extra spinning crane kick damage which gives you the enhanced blackout kick proc that blackout kick proc probably only is going to affect the first hit because that's what the tier set does but that first hit is 175 percent damage in a strike of the windlord oh my god my brain is all over the... dude windwalker windwalker might be fixed guys on singularity focus jj fire stomps initial hit now strikes one target but deals 500 to Additional damage and healing. Great, they just made single target Jade Jade Fire Stomp. Awesome. Let's see. Uh, there were a lot of talents moved on the Windwalker tree. Please use the above image for most spells, but we'll highlight some of the big ones. Widening Whirl removed. Fine. Serenity removed. Fuck off, Serenity. Spiritual focus and drinking horn cover. Uh, now a choice hit on row six. Uh, shit. I thought spiritual focus was gone. Whatever. Sky Reach removed. Cool. And Bone Dust Brew and its related talents removed. Goodbye, Bone Dust Brew. Please fuck off. All right. Mastery Combo Strikes buffed by 20% now does 12% more damage at a baseline versus 10%. So it makes Mastery Scaling a little bit better. Spinning Crane Kick just gets a passive 20% damage buff, it sounds like. Cool. Crane Vortex uh, does 15 and 30 instead of 10 20, so that talent got buffed. Uh, Dance of TG did get reduced on RPPM, which is probably fine considering everything that it does. Oh, what? Oh, oh, the damage was removed, but the mobility is still there. Oh, oh, my heart went gone for a second. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm alright with the damage being removed. It did like no damage. It was always about the mobility with Flying Serpent Kick. I can still get one shot by bosses. Glory of the Dawn now has a chance to equal 100% of your haste. Now has a chance to equal to 100% of your haste to trigger instead of just a flat 25%. Okay. It's official. Agility monks now want, or Windwalker monks now want haste. Probably not as the number one stat, but like, you're probably going to cheat. Like, I, based off my initial thoughts, obviously I want to get it played out and we'll get some math crunching as we get through the phase but now it just kind of makes item level the thing for, for windwalker that's kind of cool hardened souls now increases crit chance by five percent and crit damage by ten percent for one talent point versus four eight for two so it got a buff and a point reduction great uh inner peace no one took this so i don't fucking care jade fire stomp no longer can reset it's reset the cooldown but now increases movement speed by 20 percent while inside the area I don't know what to make of that. I mean, you get Singularity Focus Jade, which is good. Like, it's in this choice node. You still have this talent as well, giving you the damage buff to it. So you don't maintain the damage buff all the time. That probably is decent for some quality of life because you don't have to stress about the damage buff. Interesting. I'll have to play that. Mark of the Crane can only apply to the primary target. Um, I'm curious to know what that means because Strike of the Windlord applies Mark of the Crane to all targets. So I don't know what to make of this. Power Strikes now casts Expel Harm. What? I'll have to look at that. Teacher of the Monastery now stacks to four versus three. I kind of knew that with the, the Whirling Dragon Punch. Thunderfist. Now baseline gives you four stacks. Okay, so you get four stacks of Thunderfist no matter what. Okay. Touch of the Tiger now gives you 25% damage for one talent point. Uh, whatever. Transfer the power now also triggers off spinning Crane Kick. Okay. I like that. A Whirling Dragon Punk cooldown increased to 30 seconds, but the damage was increased by 52%. Primary target now takes triple... Whirling Dragon Punch is back, y'all. It's back. Please don't animation lock it, Blizzard. Let us let us move. But Whirling Dragon Punch is back. Great. Uh, awesome. Um, yo, Windwalker, guys. Dude, I'm excited. 
I'm really excited about some fucking Windwalker now, man. I I gotta go. I know Max is probably playing it on stream. I want to go look this up. I'm gonna go watch this and uh, go check out Peak and see what's going on. Cause yo, uh, I love these changes. Like almost nothing that I don't like. Mark of the Crane, Power Strikes. These are weird. I need to get understanding of them. And Jade Fire Stomp. Like these three are weird. But like, I can't say they're bad because I don't know if they are. But the rest of these. Whoever sat down and learned Windwalker Monk this season so that you could make these changes, I love you, developer. Like, giving you all the hearts. Because, dog, this is fucking amazing. Amazing. Very, very cool. Man. Serenity removed. We love it. <laughs> 